What's going on guys, Rez here and welcome back to another video. So today what we're going to be doing is pretty different from what I usually do and it's going to be a little mini series that I've been wanting to do for a little while now. I'm just going to do it because I kind of want to. It might help some people and it's just something that, I don't know, it, it, I guess it's slightly interesting but I hope you enjoy it either way guys. So basically all this is going to be is the process that I go through when creating videos for YouTube. There are a few different things that I do when making a video and that's what I'm going to go through. It will be split into a couple of different parts. So this part will be the recording process like my settings recording it and stuff the second part will be putting it into Vegas and editing the video and like showing you kind of how I edit and the third part will be making the thumbnail and then obviously uploading it these are all things that a lot of people know especially if they do YouTube and there are millions probably well there are probably millions it lives at least thousands tens of thousands of videos on YouTube of how to do stuff like this it's not the point of a tutorial I just want to show you guys the process and maybe help some people along the way so I am recording with OBS as well um, um, that's how I'm doing the screen capture. Hopefully the quality is alright. I can't record like really well with ultra high quality of OBS, but I do just want to do this for you guys. And then I'm recording my voice of Audacity, which we'll we'll get into. Anyway, so what we're starting off with is the Elgato. So what I use to record is an Elgato HD60, which you can see right there. I record my voice with a blue Yeti microphone, also known as the giant silver penis. And then I have a little pop filter on the mic. Now getting into actually recording. Recording is very easy with the Elgato. You can't see anything at the moment because I don't have anything turned on, but if you had something turned on, if your settings are right and it's connected, it will appear right here. As you can see, it says no signal because there is no input. But if you want to record, all you do is hit that little button to record the gameplay and that button to record your microphone. I don't do this anymore because I use Audacity to record my mic. And a lot of the time what I'll do, especially when I'm playing games, if I'm not recording live, if I say, say if I'm playing card and I hit a clip and it was five minutes ago, this slider can go through your entire timeline since you've turned on the software. It normally limits at two hours and then you can still go back. So basically if it was five minutes ago, I'd take this, put it to about there. It would show on here where you went to with this. So it'd show on here five minutes ago in the last game you played. And then you just hit that record button. It will record the last five minutes and then it will go into the edit tab over here. Now settings, they can be different for different people. Live streaming, I don't do. So this is normally just closed like that. Game audio, I have at about 41. I can edit it in Vegas anyway if it's too quiet or too loud. That's just what I like to keep it at. Live commentary so this is my microphone volume for example in the discord videos this is my microphone volume all you have to do is obviously you know change this volume to whatever you want to you just kind of slide it around like so you can click anywhere as well let's take that back to 50 i think you can click on this yeah you can click on this slide it up and down just like so if you want to select the device you want to use you just click the drop down and then there you go, that's the microphone I'm using currently. Here is the sound capture, which I'll go into in a sec. And then you have the preset video title, game, and description. I just keep it as that because there's no point changing it every time. I just rename it in my files. Now going into the sound capture, I don't want to open it. And I may just put a screenshot on screen of after I've recorded to show you what it is. But I don't want to open it because sound capture can mess up quite a lot. For example, every time I open Discord, my microphone doesn't work until I enable and then disable cap sound capture in the actual properties of audio and all that stuff on my PC. No idea why. It can mess up your audio quite a lot, so I'm a bit worried that if I open it, it's going to break the recording. Now we're going to get into my settings for recording, and they're, they're fairly simple. So my input device is currently the Xbox One, that's what I was last on. All you do to change consoles is click the drop down, and as you can see you've got all of these, including the new Nintendo Switch. And this, I think this does have VR support. My video input is a HDMI. Audio input is also HDMI. Color range, I keep on standard. I never touch that stuff. Obviously 1080. My quality is on complete max on best and I allow 60 FPS. I have these both ticks, no clue what they do. If we move over into picture though, this is where you can control brightness and stuff like that. You can also do it in editing software, but this is how my videos don't look really bland and dull. Basically all they do is change like obviously brightness, contrast, saturation, and the hue. Audio, I don't change at all. It just stays as standard. Profiles, you can keep so that you can have various different options that you can just save and then make another one and save that and then just switch between them so you don't have to change all these settings every time. This is just compatibility so sometimes you'll get a black screen here instead of the actual gameplay coming up. If you just mess around with this it should change it. TVs are normally about two which is what I have it on. And that is almost it for the Elgato but let's go over to edit real quick and as you can see this is the editing screen. This is what I used to edit in before I had a actual software. This area is fairly simple if you want to export something Literally all you do is click it, drag, and there you go. 
you can make it so it just exports automatically. I have this because sometimes I will accidentally drag wrong things. That's all that is, it's fairly simple. And then there's different kind of places you can share it to, as you can see down here. So we're going to move on to Audacity now, which should be interesting because I'm going to have to stop recording with Audacity and record with the OBS microphone thing. I'll see you in a minute. Well, about a millisecond for you. Okay, so now we are in Audacity. This is literally what I have just recorded for the earlier part of the video. And quickly, I'm just going to open OBS so you can see what this is. This is what I'm using to capture my screen right now. That's what that looks like. So this is Audacity. If you do not know what Audacity is, all it is is a free audio recording software. And it is a really, really great software and I've been loving using it for quite a while now. It's also a reason why my microphone sounds a lot better than it normally does. So for example, if I click play, here, you'll see the difference. Now, getting into actually recording. Recording is very easy with the Alcatra. You can't and that is what I am going to be showing you how I do, and you know, what I do to make my microphone sound better. My settings probably aren't the best, but it's what I like using, and it sounds fine to me. It, you know, it's good enough for me, and I haven't got complaints about it. Plus, it sounds better than it does without it being edited. Okay, so to do this stuff, I have a little note thing that I am going to open for you guys now, and show you kind of what I keep. So this is a little notepad uh, that you can bring up, move around stuff, uh, you can edit it, and then you can move, make another one, and yeah, just type something like, hi. This is also what I use when I record commentary videos. So for example, a recent Call of Duty one, I said I had little notes up. This is what they were on. But these are my settings for Audacity. I'm sure there's a way that you can save them and just select it every single time you want to change all this stuff, but I'm too lazy to even search if you can or not, so I just redo them every time. It doesn't take long. Okay, so the main part about using Audacity is when there is background noise, such as a fan. In this, there isn't really any background noise because my mic is quieter. So if I hit play, you can't really hear much background noise. But you can see in this up here, it does show noise coming through the microphone from the background. Although it's not too loud, I still want to get rid of it. So to do that, all you do is highlight a little section by clicking and dragging, like so. Go up to effect, hit noise reduction, and then get noise profile. And there are my settings right there, or they are right here for you guys. So if you want to pause and copy them, just do so, and then hit play again. So after you have hit noise reduction, what you want to do is hit control A, or just highlight the entire track in however way you like. Go back to effect, and repeat noise reduction. And then that is going to go through what you have recorded, get rid of the background noise, or whatever you have selected. Sometimes if it is too heavy, it can make your microphone sound a bit metallic and robotic, which is what happened to me when I first started using this. Now that that is done, there shouldn't really be any background noise. As you can see, it's completely silent. So the second thing I do, as you can see, is the compressor. Basically what the compressor is, I don't, you know, I don't know all the technical terms. I'm not like an audio expert or anything like that. But what it does is it makes everything the same level. So it sounds equal. The compressor again is fairly simple. Once you have your settings sorted out, just go to effect, go down to compressor, click it, it will highlight the track. And then these are the only two that I have changed. I have not touched these at all, but hit okay and it will do the same thing as the noise reduction did. Now when this finishes, you're going to see a difference in the actual audio channels. As you can see, everything has gone up a bit because my microphone is quieter than it used to be. It is upping all of my audio instead of making it a little bit quieter, which is what it used to do. So now this is what it sounds like. Now, getting into actually recording, it's a bit louder. Okay, so step three in my audio editing. The next thing is going to be equalization, bass boost and treble boost. Now what this does is boost the bass and treble in my voice, so it makes my microphone sound a bit more professional and much higher quality than it actually is, although the Blue Yeti is a pretty damn good microphone. So for equalization, again, go up to effect, find equalization, which is right there. Once you have this open, go down to here. So I normally just start off with bass boost. I don't think it really matters. Select bass boost. It should look something like this. This is just the default setting. I haven't touched it really at all. So once you've selected bass boost from that drop down menu, hit OK, and it will go through this process. And as you can see, it has changed the audio track slightly. It has also added stuff here. Now, there's not actually any sound coming through. There's, the noise reduction still has work, but if you would like to, once you have finished doing all of this and adding all these settings, you can do noise reduction at the end. But this is what it sounds like now. Now, getting into actually recording. Recording is very easy with the Outcatcher. You can't see anything. It sounds a bit better and has more bass in my voice. You can up this as much as you want to make your voice really deep, and there is also other settings in Audacity to do that sort of thing. The same goes for the treble boost. Again, effect, equalization, drop down, and treble boost. Default, 
and hit OK. And now that that's done, you may not be able to tell much of a difference, but this is how it sounds. Now, getting into actually recording. Recording is very easy over the outcast, so you can't see anything. It sounds, it sounds much better, but now you can hear background noise. I may start actually doing noise reduction at the end, or just up my settings so it gets rid of more of the background noise. The final step for audio editing that I do is a limiter and hard limit. You should have this somewhere. It can look different for different people depending on your version, but it should be there somewhere. I will show you where mine is in the drop down. So there are my settings for it as well. So the limiter is the exact same as everything else. Back down to effects, or back up to the effects menu scroll all the way down and my limiter is right here. Click it and it'll bring up this menu. Once you're in here it has this drop down which has these various kinds of limits. I'm not sure what they all do but this is the one that I was suggested to use and it is what I use. So I select hard limit, hit OK and it does this process once again. Now what the limiter does if you have say right here for example if you have this going up all the way to here, if you have the limiter setting to a certain amount, then it will bring it back down to here and keep it flat. The same with anything else, so that certain things, if your mic peaks, you scream really loud, for example, if you're playing a scary game, it will cut that down so it doesn't deafen people as much. And now finally, we're going to quickly try the noise reduction again. So highlight, effect, go down to noise reduction, get noise profile, I like all of it, effect, and repeat noise reduction or control R. Okay, so now that that has completed, as you can see, it's completely gotten rid of those little wavy lines along here, but we're going to see what it sounds like now. Now, getting into actually recording, and it actually sounds okay. Anyway, that is the last step in audio editing, and then the next thing to do is put everything into Vegas and begin editing. I don't edit my audio in here, I do that in Vegas along with the video track, it just makes things a whole lot easier for me. Final step, of course, is to actually export the audio. So go down to export audio. It will bring up your files, and then you save it as whatever you would like. Bring up this menu, you can add stuff in here if you would like to, and hit OK. And there you have it. That is how I record my audio, video, and also screen capture. So I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope this wasn't too long, and hopefully it helps some people. I've probably just blabbered on about random things and make absolutely zero sense and just repeat myself all the time, but I'm doing this for a little bit of fun. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, hopefully it helped. If it did, make sure to drop a comment and let me know, also drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already, but I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye guys.